Welcome, Kingdom Warriors. These are exciting times. You're about to hear Imperial Revelation, supreme wisdom, and strategic guidance for the biggest battle the world has ever seen. Now open your ears, hearts, and minds for divine instruction and leadership from your general, David E. Taylor. Good evening, everyone. How are you doing this week? It's so good to be back with you again this Thursday night for another powerful evening. We're so happy that Apostle David E. Taylor will be with us tonight. Um, he is back on U.S. soil and with awesome reports to report from the nation of Korea and what's going on over there, revival has broken out. Lives are being transformed and changed all for the glory of God. And that nation, you know, the north and the south, they are going to become together and we're going to see something so phenomenal that that nation and those nations have never seen ever before. For such a time as this, this is God's time, God's divine movement in motion in Korea. And it is so exciting. I'm so looking forward to what Apostle will share with us about what's going on in that part of the world and what is going on um, in our nation as well and, and all the nations of the world as this is God's army and he is moving and we need to keep up with him. So I'm so excited to be with you all tonight and everybody. Pastor Steve, have you heard awesome reports? Well, you know, uh, Kathleen, I was so happy to hear the eyewitness report of Pastor Joseph last week. He did such a phenomenal job of relaying what was what was happening over there. And now tonight I am absolutely just thrilled to hear the 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 witness, the face to face witness that is Apostle Taylor the face-to-face witness of heaven, uh, exactly what is what is happening over there in Korea. Uh, yes, I, I've heard reports on, on, on Facebook and from ministry staff as they've heard things and uh, ha- have related. Just incredible. Yeah, you're right. A revival has broke out. A move of God has broke out in that nation, and I'm looking forward to what God is going to do in this nation uh, uh, during this time as well. You know, uh, Kathleen, when I, as I was listening, as you were talking, uh, it just it just kind of um, it kind of just sunk in home how how that throughout history God has always had a man uh, anything of any significance that was done anything notable anything that moved heaven moved earth uh, there was a man God had a man and you know. In today's society, you can go anywhere. You can go. You can just go across this nation. There will be seminars. There will be things happening. Church services. Uh, just, just all kind of things. We have mega churches. We have home churches. We have uh, street ministries. We have all different types of ministries. But still, uh, the kingdom of God uh, is not moving on the earth like it should because we're we're just so involved with our church ministries. But God has been preparing a man for the last 20 years. He has been preparing a man uh, to, to move us in the direction that we need to go. Just like in the days of old, God is preparing a man now to do something significant in the earth today. And, of course, that man is Apostle David E. Taylor. While other people have been uh, building kingdoms and building mega ministries, and, and there's nothing wrong with that, uh, still, he has been for the last 20 years just been preparing his heart, been working on a relationship, sometimes spending months on end uh, in hideaway and in seclusion to uh, just work on the relationship with God the Father, with Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit. And he has been preparing himself, and we are getting ready to witness. This 10,000-man army is getting ready to witness as this general is being unleashed in the earth uh, what God is going to do, and I'm so excited that we are a part of that uh, even tonight. And I'm looking forward to hearing from Apostle Taylor uh, himself tonight. Amen. Uh, me too. It's going to be so awesome. And, and like you're saying too, Pastor Steve, it's so important that, you know, we do take the time to honor Apostle Taylor and what it is that he has done to sacrifice. There's so much that he's given up to have this relationship with the Lord Jesus who has who's opened that up to to having relationship with the Father and what he's able to do in the earth because of the sacrifices that he's made that we clearly have no clue, um, you know, to what extent he really truly has sacrificed and he's laid down his own agenda. He's laid down what most ministers and pastors and leaders would 
um, would count as, you know, their success of their ministry, he has laid that all down to follow and to um, be passionate and pursue the desire of the Father, of the Father and of Jesus. And, you know, that is just amazing, and we don't see enough of that at all in, in the churches. And, and that goes back to us really preaching the kingdom of God, you know, before we do the, ch- the church thing, that the kingdom has got to be ministered so that we come into the fullness and see what God's desires are and we can see those accomplished in the earth. And I'm so grateful to be a part, just as you've mentioned, you are, and I'm sure everybody on this line is also so grateful to be a part of that. And, um, you know, the overflow from what has, has happened in Korea is going to be expressed and released in Orange, Orange, California this weekend. I know that the overflow from what God was releasing there in Korea is just going to just be poured out. And, um, you know, it's just like overwhelmingly today I could feel that, like just a, a deluge again of, the, of God's himself pouring himself out on these regions and these places that Apostle's going into um, at, these, at this time. There's just a, something very, very special about this timing we're in, and I'm so excited about that. Marcy, do you have the um, address for where Apostle will be this Saturday and Sunday? Yes, I do, and um, he will be at Breath of the Spirit Church, and that is 1624 West Catella Avenue, Orange, California, and again, that's 1624 West Catella Avenue in Orange, California. That's right there near uh, Disney, Disneyland. And those dates are March the 9th to the 10th at 2.30 p.m. both nights. And I'm telling you, Kathleen, people um, from all over have been calling the office, inquiring about what's about to take place this weekend in California on the West Coast. They're hungry and they are excited. They've been hearing about what the Father and what the Lord Jesus have been doing. And I'm telling you, the West Coast is, has caught fire. There's been a move of God that is taking place and it broke out on the West Coast, and many are going out that way to experience God that face-to-face, um, God in a face-to-face way like never before. It's awesome. Amen, yes. And, you know, I think one of the major things that you just said right there, Marcy, is that the people are expecting. They're expecting God to show up and to do something different for them. That is, that is, that is believing for something. That is walking in a different realm when we're expecting God to show up and to do something different for us. If we can just get that mind, you know, change our mindsets and change our hearts into an expectation of his manifestation and of his glory in our life, wow, what a difference we'll make, what a difference we can make in so many areas and so many realms of, of our lives. And, you know, every place we go, we can affect things so much differently with it when we have the right expectation, which requires the right amount of love, the, the right heart of love. That's awesome. I'm excited about that. And then... What is the what is the situation for the next week, Miss Marcy? Well, um, this is so exciting. Um, the response from Korea has been tremendous. Korea, I'm telling you, North and South Korea is changed. This is a calculated move, and this is why Apostle Taylor is going back to Korea, March the 18th through the 31st. He's going back to Seoul, Korea. Um, and I'm telling you, everyone that is on this line, I said this is calculated. I believe, I know for a fact this is the Father's plan for the East. I'm telling you, hundreds of thousands of Koreans over in Seoul, Korea, not even on American soil, they are seeing the Lord Jesus face to face. And I'm telling you, it is not just with the church people. Um, it, it has crossed over into the political realm, people that are not even a church, also the church people, they are seeing Jesus. And so he is going back over. And and what is so tremendous about that, he has been invited to come over there uh, by this major leader that many of you all on this line have heard of, Dr. Cho, who has the largest church in the world. This is exciting and this is awesome and it's calculated by the Father. 
Amen. And this is so tremendous, too, because I believe there was, like, prophetic words given when Apostle Taylor was in Korea the last time, two years ago, that, uh, you know, the Lord told him, in two years you'll go back, and it's just going to be huge. It's going to be phenomenal. And this is what we're seeing. We're seeing the prophetic word of the Lord. We're seeing his desire and his words being fulfilled over there. That's tremendous. This is awesome. It's a validation of, you know, just how the Lord works with Apostle Taylor and just how closely they are, you know, and that he hears so clearly from him and that they do communicate and that they are in relationship. I love that. That is so tremendous. Isn't that something, Pastor Steve? Did you hear that, too, with the the 24 months after and then how, like, it was two years to the day that the calls came in and everything was just amazing, how God is so strategic and how he plans and he sees that his words don't return void. Oh, absolutely. God is not a liar. Uh, God is not a liar. And uh, it is just incredible, uh, the, the timing of God, being, being in that timing, knowing that you're in that right place at that right time, uh, of the right thing. God is moving. And uh, it, that, is, that is just an incredible thing, how that all came to be, how that all transpired. Um, just incredible. And, you know, Kathleen, also to uh, just, just to continue, this is just rolling on in my spirit, just to continue uh, with this one thought. Can you imagine if you were building a foundation to a building and the foundation alone took 20 years? If the foundation alone took 20 years, how big could the building be? How big uh, would the move be? How big would the plan be? How big would it be if there is a foundation that took 20 years to build? Uh, and it's that same thing in the spirit uh, with this move of God. It has been in foundation, uh, in foundation uh, mode for the last 20 years, building uh, uh, on a foundation, the relationship, the face-to-face a message of Jesus Christ that God the Father wants to come down and work uh, with a man. The the message of the honor, uh, the message of the kingdom, uh, all the messages that have been rolled into one that has been being taking place for 20 years now. How big, how big is this move that God is wanting to do with the, the time that he has taken uh, to work with somebody and to prepare somebody for a great move of God. How big is this move of God that is getting ready? I shouldn't say getting ready. That is happening. That is happening right now in Korea, uh, in this country, on the West Coast. uh, Everywhere that he goes, God appears, God shows up. And uh, it is just incredible to see it transpire, to see it with our eyes, to hear it with our ears, and to know it in our hearts. It is just truly amazing what God is doing. For sure it is, and it's so exciting. And I think it's really key and and, and important for us to really focus on the point that you're saying there, too, about the foundation. You know, um, it's funny that I was driving down the street today, and the Lord was showing me about foundations and showing me how, you know, things, things can be widespread, but they don't have foundation. They don't last. You know, people don't stay where they go. They don't plant themselves because they don't, and then they can't grow down deep and wide. But that's so important that you would say that about how he has really just, Apostle Taylor has really laid the foundation. He has, he has dug, he has labored, he has, um, you know, really developed the foundation to be strong enough um, with this relationship. And it's all through relationship, it's through love, it's through, uh, you know, as you're saying, honor and everything like that. But that is how we build the foundation that something so strong and so powerful like the Father can stand with, you know, that we would be able to stand with him on that kind of foundation and do the work that he wants to see happen in the earth so that his son has the precious bride, that his son has that harvest of souls that we're looking for. And it's that foundation of love that really pulls, you know, that's where we can be so effective and we can reach the people who are lost and we can reach the people who have been rejected in the churches and, um, you know, and we can pull them back in and love them back to life, love them back to their purpose and their destiny. And, you know, Apostle Taylor is always saying about how we are going to go out into the highways and the byways and we're going to see lives transformed and changed. And we can't truly do that and be effective if we don't love them, if we don't have that foundation, foundational 
tool and key that is so, so, so important. Well, you know, Moses, he just didn't show up one day. There was, there was a long process involved when he was tending sheep, uh, when God was dealing with him, out of sight, out of mind of anybody. Uh, but God was working with somebody, preparing somebody, preparing their heart, preparing their character, preparing their destiny, preparing the relationship. Uh, he just didn't show up and deliver Israel. There was a, there was a process involved, hidden from everything. Uh, Joseph. He just didn't show up one day and deliver, uh, deliver his brothers. Uh, he, he went through a process. There were things that he had to go through uh, in prison, uh, being sold into slavery, uh, before he became uh, who Joseph ultimately became uh, at his fullest and finest destiny. Still, there was a process where he was hidden. He was not seen. Uh, he was just in preparation. Uh, all through... Uh, biblical history, you'll see that, where God was preparing somebody. In fact, Apostle has a great message about the 20-year process of becoming a son, becoming processed to the point where God can do something with you, notably, uh, significantly, in Scripture. And so uh, you know, that's, that's what we've seen uh, over this time, over the last 20 years, where God has just been absolutely preparing uh, preparing a man for this end time move, for this last day's work. And uh, I, I'm so thrilled to be a part of that. And I know as this 10,000 man army grows um, and they hear more of the messages, get more of the revelation, uh, find out more of what God is doing uh, with this move and this man, that uh, the, the, the army is just growing. It is, it is absolutely transforming. Uh, people are being changed, lives are being changed as they come into a relationship with Jesus like they have never had before because of the face-to-face -face relationship, because of the revelation teaching, uh, being uh, a witness to the power of God, to the moving of God. Um, lives are truly being transformed and changed. Um, and I'm looking forward to this broadcast tonight because it will be a very now word a very sure word, uh, a very needed word for what God, God has for us tonight. It will take us to another step. It will take us to another level. It will re reveal things uh, about what God is doing. It will reveal things in our own lives that need to be changed. Uh, it will motivate us. It will cause us to want to move forward uh, with this army under this general. Absolutely, for sure. Um, and you know what else, too, is so important that during that processing time, Pastor Steve, that we recognize, that we can recognize that it's a time of processing, that, you know, yeah, maybe God has called us to be this, you know, dynamic um, person or general or whatever it may be, but if we, don't, if we don't recognize that timing and the process that it involves and that it really requires for us to be able to fulfill the assignment God gives, we can miss that destiny, and I'm so grateful um, that Apostle Taylor is, you know, humble and that he knew and, and that the Lord was able to deal with him so that he, he paid the price and he, he, he sacrificed and he went ahead and he, he went through the process. He completed the process, which we're all, you know, we're all in process. And, you know, I just pray that we all would stay with that right heart so we know not to come out of the process too soon and not be able to handle the things that come against us. You know, as Apostle teaches in that series, too, you know, it's through the processes that prepare us for the challenges of the, you know, of the assignment. Once we get there, you know, it's not going to just be handed over to us. We're going to have to, you know, fight for things and, and go through things during those times. But the process, if we forfeit that pro the process of it, we aren't going to know how to handle, you know, when those things come against what God's called us to do and to be. And so I'm, I think that's really important that we understand, you know, that and we recognize that process in time. Don't don't neglect it because it's because it's time and it seems like it takes forever. But it's through that that we can you know that we can really be effective. So it's exciting. It's very very exciting. And then we also have services here in Taylor uh, for Passover week. So that would be March 25th through the 29th, 7 p.m. every day. And it is so important for us to really honor the, the things that are on God's calendar. And, you know, Passover is very important. 
And so we are going to be meeting at 20320, the Joshua Media Ministries International Northeastern Headquarters, um, the 25th through the 29th, each night at 7 p.m. And on the 29th, we will be celebrating with the Passover meal and um, bringing forth the first fruits and, you know, being with the sacrificial offering and, and uh, learning what really belongs to us in this season that's on God's calendar. Um, that he, you know, it's one of the feasts that he requires us to, to honor and to um, take part in. And so, you know, this is just going to be an awesome time of revelation of the things that belong to us um, because of the Passover. So we invite you and encourage you to be there for that. And then on Resurrection Sunday, we will also be having service at the JMMI Northeastern Headquarters um, at 10 a.m., so we are excited about that. We look forward to you celebrating with us during those times, too. So, Marcy? Yes, Kathleen, I'm still here. Well, I'm so glad you are. Uh, let, me, let me just add something about Passover, if I could. Um, let, let me add this. In Exodus 34, uh, this is what the Bible says, uh, that three times in the year that we stand before him, Three times, and this is one of those times. Passover time is one of those times where we uh, stand before God. He comes near to us. We draw near to him. It is a very special, significant time of the year, a very significant time where God commands that we stand before him. And so that's why we have this week of Passover uh, where we, 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 we just set aside that week. It is a time that we go after him, that we find him as he is drawing near to us, that we go after him. And so that's why we have a week of services. And then the uh, Passover dinner is just a special, special night. I, I term that night the, the highest form of communion that you will take in a year. In the whole year, that's the highest form of communion where we celebrate the, the death of Jesus Christ and his resurrection. Uh, we celebrate that time. It's not a time that we mourn. It's a time that we rejoice in. We celebrate in that he did that, that he was our Passover lamb. And so that because it's such a special time and because uh, God gave his very best during Passover, he gave the very, the very holiest lamb, the, the unspotted, unblemished lamb, he gave that. Uh, and so... Because he gave his very best, we also prepare a special offering where we give to God. We give to God our very best offering uh, during this time. That's a very special, uh, very special time. And then in Exodus 19, it talks about how we observe this day forever. The Bible says we observe it forever. It, it goes on in memorial. Uh, it constantly, it never ends. This is what he said. This is what God said. He said you will observe this forever. And so that's, this is why we observe it. Uh, we, we, we make special time to set aside, and we meet with God. And uh, I'm looking forward to this. It, it is a very special time of the year, and um, now there's something significant uh, because God actually just truly does draw near to us during these special times. And so I'm looking forward to everyone, if you're in this area, if you can get to the uh, Joshua Media Ministry headquarters at the address that was given earlier, 20320 Superior Road in Taylor, Michigan, you will want to absolutely make every effort to be here, to get here, because there will be something significant uh, that will happen in your life uh, as we draw near to God, as he draw near, draws near to us. Amen. And there will be child care provided uh, during that time as well. So, um you know, bring the children, and they'll be having little uh, class things as well. And, um, you know, let nothing prevent you from being here during this time because of, you know, what it is that God requires of us during this time and what it is that we receive from him, you know, during this time. It's just powerful, very, very powerful. So I have more dates I can give for the um, all the listeners, those that are interested in where Apostle Taylor will be. Um we still have more dates for you. His calendar is, is is pretty much full to the rest of this year. Um, however, he, he will be in other areas around this country and also out of the country. The next event on the calendar 
we have is April 22nd and 23rd. He'll be in St. Louis, Missouri. Hey, so his face-to-face conference, and um, which is uh, going to be uh, happening here in St. Louis quite often. And if you're in this area, you do not want to miss. If you're in the St. Louis area, you do not want to miss these face-to-face conferences. I'm telling you, what if I told you that Jesus will come and appear to you? Wouldn't you want him to do that? Wouldn't you be excited that Jesus is coming? Yes. And he will, amen, he will come. And if you're in the St. Louis area, the surrounding areas, or if you just want to travel to be a part of this event, we want you to come contact the office. Um, the location is to be announced. Um, but you can contact our office, and we can fill you in with the details. You can call one eight seven seven the glory and um, get the information at that moment. And then right after that, we'll be uh, back out on the West Coast. And then May 15th through the 18th, at Grace Ministries International, 1645 West Valencia Drive, Fullerton, California. And this is going to be a massive event. We want you to be there. Be at that event. The services will begin 7 p.m. nightly. Again, this is the May 15th through the 18th. Um, don't miss this event. It's going to be a crusade. And um, I'm excited about what God is about to do in this. Um, service, yeah. Kathleen. I mean, it's, it's going to be gonna, awesome. Oh, yes. It's going to be powerful. Power yeah. is going to just be, a, it's going to just be amazing. But you know what? I don't know why. I just have this urgency in me today, Marcy and Pastor Steve. You know, I'm sure we have hundreds of people on the line, possibly thousands, and I would love for, I just feel like we need to put this out there. So many times, Jesus is really appearing to people. And, you know, we just we, we just kind of assume that he is or whatever. But, you know what, go to Apostle's page on Facebook and share your testimony. Call the one eight seven seven the glory number and yes. share your testimony with us. We want to hear what is going on in your life. We want to hear how God is visiting you, how he's touching you, how he is, you know, bringing about breakthroughs and praise reports in your life. Let us give him honor and glory for the things that he's doing in our lives, and let us share that. Let us share that and build the faith of the people around us. Give them hope and give them reason to come in and be a part of what God's doing here. This is huge and this is massive, but if we don't share what God's doing in our lives and and around us and in the circumstances that we face each day, how are we going to draw people in? How are we going to pull them in and invite them and give them something to say, I want to be part of that. Share that information with us, please, and and share that on Apostle's Facebook page, on Twitter, wherever it is, and let the people know that there is hope and that they don't have to live in their same bondage they live in today, that Jesus heals, that Jesus saves, that Jesus is alive, and that he's appearing today. That's awesome. And I'm telling you, a lot of the people that are inviting Apostle Taylor to come out to their region is because, of the face-to-face appearances because of something um, that they didn't think it was possible and that can happen to them. And I'll tell you, that's why it's opening up in so many different areas, leaders across the the, the regions in America and around the world um, are experiencing this. They're experiencing this. And I will also encourage you to, if you have not, purchase your copy of the Face-to-Face Appearances from Jesus book, I encourage you to do so today. Amen. This will change your life. Yes. It will change your life. And, and not only uh, that it will change your life, but there's a promise that is attached to it, which is the reason why it's going to change your life, because Jesus is going to appear to you. We're getting reports from around the world that this is happening. The publishing company, Destiny Image, as they were putting putting this book together, they were seeing Jesus. <laughs> and Jesus yes. was changing their lives. Amen. And, you know, I just heard an awesome story, too, recently, Marcy, and I think that you were there and several others on staff were there. But, you know, as we're going about and, and Apostle Taylor is ministering all over the world, 
Um, obviously, we have to um, start translating the book in different languages, and yes. and um, so I understand that the person who was translating it, or who is still currently translating in in, in Spanish, um, yes. the Lord just kept appearing to the person while they were translating, so it was delaying the process. <laughs> <laughs> because Jesus was visiting this individual so often and, and, and the glory and power of God was just taking him and he could not continue on translating because of the presence of the Lord just, you know, really doing some some something in him. And so we were hearing that report and it was I thought it was a little comical too because you know God really does have a sense of humor. <laughs> yes he does. <laughs> Yes, he does. This is awesome. He's just preparing it. Uh, the book is being translated in multiple languages. This, I tell you people, this is real. Jesus, he can appear to you and change your life. If you heard that the Lord Jesus cannot appear to you, don't listen to that. Mm-hmm. He will appear to you, and he will change your life. He will show himself to you. And your life will be forever changed. It will not be the same. It will not be the same. Lord. This is something that you, you got to understand this and you got to know it. And we got to dispel these beliefs that are not real, that Jesus will not appear to you. Jesus, he will appear to you. Hallelujah, he will and he does. And you know what's so exciting? He'll appear to your children. He'll appear yeah. to your parents. He'll appear to your unsaved loved ones. He's not a respecter of persons. And he is he's appearing just wherever he knows where he's gonna penetrate and that person is running with him and introducing him to to worlds and to nations and just as what happened with Apostle Taylor, seventeen years old on the streets doing what he was doing, and the Lord Jesus appears to him in a dream and changes his life instantly. That's what's happening to people all across this nation and across the world. And we're seeing that we're seeing a lot of young people really being touched by the visitation of the Lord right now. And that is, is so encouraging to me because, you know, they are our future. They are the generation that's going to come, you know, that we're raising up, that what what kind of impact are we having on them to make them, you know, and what kind of impact that we're having on them that we trickle down onto the kids that they that they know. And we're just seeing an increase even in our youth and, you know, around here where they just know that Jesus is real and they want to be in the church. I just got in a conversation with somebody the other day, and they were saying, do you have to drag your kids? And, you know, you're, I said, no. We can, sometimes we can't get them to leave the building. You know, we're like, come on, guys, we're hungry. And they're doing their worship. They're all just jamming, and they're all, you know, they just want to be there. They want to give God glory and give God honor. And that is so tremendous, and we're seeing an increase in that, and that is exciting to me, very exciting. Man, and Kathleen, there's just one more event that I do want to tell you about and tell everyone that is on this line about one more event, um, and but it's not the last event of the year, but just one more is, uh, big national crusade. It's going to be here in St. Louis. I'm in St. Louis, so it's going to be here in St. Louis, Missouri. Woo! Uh, 60, yes, yes, exactly, because <laughs> there's so many promises attached to this city. You have no idea. But 6055 Parker Road, Florissant, Missouri, um, if you're in the area, I don't care how far you are, on um, May 22nd through the 25th, I, we need you to be in St. Louis, 7 p.m. nightly. Um, also on uh, Friday morning and Saturday, Saturday morning, there's a 10.30 a.m. You don't want to miss the time. Of course, once again, miracles, new marvels, things we have never seen or experienced. Um, I tell you, um, Kathleen, those that are on this line that have never been to one of uh, Apostle Taylor's crusades, what are you waiting for? You're missing yeah. it. You, you, yeah. you are missing. I, I just don't know what's going on with you right now. <laughs> maybe maybe there's some confusion to think they have to have a, a, an ailment in their physical body to no. go to a healing crusade. But let me tell you, each and every crusade we go into, we see people delivered from the wrong mindsets. We see people delivered from eating disorders, from drugs, from alcohol. Uh, yes, and we also see manifestations of healing of legs grown out, blinded eyes open, you know, deaf ears open, uh, cancers being healed. We're seeing it all because yes. God is not limited by our physical ailments. 
He wants to heal us and make us whole in every area of our lives. We're seeing financial miracles, marriage yes. miracles. Uh, you name it. What are, but that's what we talked about earlier at the beginning of this call is our expectation of what yes. God will do for us. And you've got to go walk in, in that place and in that room. That atmosphere is perfect for yes. you to receive what you expect from him. Is that true? That's true. That is true, the atmosphere, the the worship, the, I'm telling you, when, you know when the Lord Jesus comes into the place, it's the atmosphere, you cannot even stand in the Not place. Not at all. At all. <laughs> no. You can't, you, you absolutely cannot stand in the place, and the awesome thing about it um, is, you know, even after the service, how the people, they linger, they don't even want to leave. <laughs> I <laughs> They don't want to leave, and it's tremendous. The love of God is just yeah. flows like never before. Um, I'm telling you, and then the miracles, the miracles are so dynamic and so powerful. Um, we challenge the enemy. <laughs> you know, I'm telling you, we 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 challenge the enemy, and the, it's just the the love of God, the flow. Of Jesus, He comes to those meetings. He promised Apostle Taylor that every service that He does, every crusade that He does, that He Himself will come in and He touch the people, yeah. touch the people, and change their life forever. It is not an anointing. It is not out of a gift, but. Jesus Christ himself, he comes and he touched the people. And then we hear reports of people, I, they felt someone yeah. touched them. They yeah. felt someone touched them, but there was nobody, you know, they looked around, they didn't see anyone there. They, they feel the heat. They feel, you know, they 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 have feel all of the manifestations that Jesus Christ himself is there and touched mm-hmm. their bodies. And they leave completely whole. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. And I think, too, like what you just, you hit the nail right on the head there, Marcy, with the love. You know, because love never fails. It always wins. It always, it always wins. It's constant and it remains. And when that love atmosphere, you know, we create that atmosphere of worship and the love of God just, it, it, just starts pouring out and dripping in there. And, you, and that's truly what you see. And you hear the people say they've never been in a place where they felt the love so so powerfully, the love of God. That is what we've been hearing for the last, it seems, almost constantly. Every, even not even crusades, but even in just regular meetings, people are walking out saying that. You know, Pastor Steve, have you heard that report as well? Oh, oh absolutely, Kathleen. And what, and what we're saying is we, we are... We are experiencing the fullness of God. We are experiencing the fullness of what uh, of what the kingdom is. We are experiencing everything. It's not we're not getting a part or a partial uh, or, or living off of a strength or off of a certain anointing or off of a certain gift. We are we are experiencing the fullness of God uh, as He is in these services. Uh, the revelation of God, the love of God, the peace of God, the healing that comes. Uh, the manifestations of the Spirit, uh, the repentance that comes, the lives that are being changed, uh, people that are seeing the Lord. I, I mean, I am a witness of this. I can witness of this just like you have. I can witness that this is all true. Uh, Jesus Christ will come to you face to face. Uh, he came to me. He has come to my wife. He has come to my children, uh, come to my, uh, my in-laws, my daughter and son-in-law. Uh, my daughter-in-law, all the way over in Taiwan, uh, the Lord made an appearance over to over there uh, to her when she needed it most, uh, and that and that's and that's one of the wonderful things about Jesus Christ when when He appears to you, when He comes to you um, after being subjected to to this ministry and this move of God, uh, when He comes to you, uh, it is exactly when you need it and the very thing that you need. You know, when Jesus Christ appeared uh, to the woman that was caught in adultery, uh, he appeared to her just when she needed it most. She needed forgiveness, and she needed release from her captors, even her tormentors, even those that would kill her. Uh, And at the same time, Jesus made an appearance with her. He was making an appearance to them, to her accusers. Uh, And it was a different type of appearance to them as it was to her, 
but it was exactly what they needed as well as she. So when the Lord comes to you, it is exactly what you need. Uh, I know many have uh, have uh, experienced uh, different manifestations from the Lord, but until you see him face to face, it is then that you really begin to understand what he's like, who he is, what his personality is like, what his character is like the love that you were speaking of just a few moments ago. That is the fullness that, that what we're talking about. Everything, everything that is in Scripture, everything that is in your hopes and dreams, everything that is your, in your imagination, everything that you want, God uh, is the fullness of it. Uh, in these meetings, uh, in, in the Revelation teachings, it comes across... Um, just being in that atmosphere where God is working with Apostle Taylor, the very atmosphere has changed. You can tell when the Lord walks into a room like, like he promised he would do at these crusade meetings. You can, the, the whole atmosphere changes. Everything changes. And miracles begin to just, just happen without anybody laying a hand on, on, on you, touching you, breathing on you, blowing on you, uh, speaking over you. No, just the, the presence and the atmosphere the environment absolutely electrifies when the Lord walks in and uh, everything changes and things begin to happen. And it's not just the miracles of the body, but it's miracles of the emotions, of the heart, of the mind, of the spirit. Everything changes. When people walk out, they can say of any surety that they have been in the presence of the Lord. There is no doubt that they have been in this presence. And uh, it's life-changing. Uh, just just getting the, some CDs can be life-changing because of the revelation. Uh, it, it is phenomenal. You can tell after hearing these messages or being a part of these services that there is something different here. There is, there is revelation born out of relationship. There is witness born out of the relationship. There is changed hearts born out of the relationship. There is newness and freshness born out of the relationship. Everything is different. And so, again, I'm, I am a witness, just like you are, of the very fullness of God because of the atmosphere that we are in, uh, because of the army that we are in, because of uh, the move of God that we're in. Uh, and I encourage everyone to be just as involved as you possibly can be. Get involved, get joined up, get connected up, get close, get in, get just be a part of. Your life will never, ever, ever, ever be the same. It will be changed forever, changed forever uh, as, as, this go, as we go from glory to glory and as we go from revelation to revelation and as love is being poured out in our hearts, we are changed forever, ever, Kathleen and Marcia. Yes, that is so true. And you know what else, Pastor Steve, too, is when we talked about at the beginning of this call or shortly after it got started, you know, the foundation of the kingdom. And really, what is that? It is love. And that is what we see happening and what we were discussing about the people in these, in these meetings. When they're feeling that love, what else can change you but the power of love? Love changes people. It heals people. It mends people. It, and, and for us to learn that, for us to learn, you know, and through the relationship, like you were just saying about relationship, relationship is what gives us the revelation. And, and the revel through the, re the relationship, we get the revelation of God's love. We are able to receive his love so we can pour it out, so we can give it out. If we can't receive, we cannot give something we don't have. And the love that changes people is the love of God. It's not the love that is conditional that, that humans have. It's the love of God that's unconditional, that sees the best in somebody when everybody else is seeing the worst, that sees the, you know, that sees the wholeness of that person when everybody else sees their sickness and their disease. God sees them whole. God sees them healthy and happy and perfect. And that's how we need to start seeing each other. That's how we need to start seeing the people that we're, we're going to approach or that we're going to minister in any way, shape, or form to. If we could just see them the way God sees them, we can see them change and they will be changed because of that love. 
Oh, oh, absolutely, absolutely. And as you talk about talk about love and being poured out and giving everything over, uh, I, let me refer back to uh, Exodus 12, where I talked about that memorial where uh, the Lord says, "Remember this forever." You know, the lamb that you'll find this in verse nine. The lamb that was used, the the unblemished, unspotted lamb that was used. This is what the instruction that God gave to Moses. Every part of that lamb should be used. Every part, nothing wasted, uh, nothing, nothing left behind at all. Uh, and, and in fact, this is what it says, uh, verse 8, And they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire and unleavened bread, with bitter herbs they shall eat it. Verse 9, Eat it not of it raw, nor sodden at all with water, but roast with fire his head and his legs with the pertinence thereof, or the, uh, the uh, intestines, everything. And let nothing of it remain, verse 10, until the morning, and that which remains of it until the morning ye shall burn with fire. Everything was used from the lamb. Now let me flip over, let us turn our thoughts over to Isaiah 53, the suffering servant, the Messiah. Um, it talks about how God, it pleased the Father to bruise him, bruise Jesus. And what that word bruise means is crush. It pleased the Father to absolutely crush him. Just like the, everything was used of the Lamb. Everything that, that Jesus took to the cross was used. Everything was poured out. Everything was given. He gave everything. There was nothing left of him. Absolutely, his body was so broken, so battered. Uh, every, every drop of blood spilled out. Uh, he was crushed. It pleased the Father to crush him, just like the Passover lamb, the original, uh, the institution of Passover. Everything was used. He poured out. He gave everything. He gave everything. That's why we experience that fullness, because he gave so much. We have the fullness uh, uh, of Jesus Christ. We have that fullness of that lamb. And so that's, that's the thing that we feel in these services. That's the thing that we feel. That's the thing that we realize. That's, that is the presence that we are part of uh, because of what Jesus poured out uh, at Passover, poured out on the cross. Everything was used. And so it's, that's why we give everything. That's why the Lord requires us to give everything. Uh, we are slaves to him. We are bought with a price. Uh, we, our lives are not our own, and so we give everything. Uh, we, give, we give all to the Lord, and, and that's what um, is so important about these, uh, these telecasts or these phone casts every Thursday night, uh, being part of the services. It, it just reveals him to us. Layers are being removed. Uh, we are being processed. We are being prepared for what God is doing. We don't just... It's, we don't just show up like like, uh, like I was speaking earlier. Moses just didn't show up. Joseph just didn't show up. Um, these men of God just didn't show up. They went through a process, and so we're going through that same process. Uh, these, these telephone broadcasts are part of the process. Being in these services, being in these crusades, it's part of the process. Being in that presence of God as he pours himself out to us again and again every night uh, ongoing. Yes, that is so true. And you know what, um, Pastor Steve, what God has been showing me too an awful lot lately is about how he, it did please him to see his son bruised. And so equally, he, he you know, Apostle teaches about the latter rain and about how that's actually the father that comes down on earth and is going to work with him. You know, Apostle Taylor is going to be able to work with the father because the Father gave up, like you mentioned this already earlier in the phone call about how he gave his best. He gave, this Passover lamb was the best. He was the only one qualified for the remissions of our sins, for the whole world's sins. You know, the generations that have gone before us, the generations that will come after us, he already done it. He, he's already done it. He's already paid that price. And because of that, God is the Father is not going to let his son not have the perfect bride. The perfect bride for him has got to be so beautiful, so wonderful, so perfect, without spot or blemish, and he's going to come back and make sure that happens before he sends his son back because of what his son's obedience 
to him did for us. And I, it's just like this huge thing where he's showing me, look, I, you know what, he's my my, he's my only begotten son. He did. He was so obedient. He was so perfect. He's the perfect sacrifice for every single person in the world. And he loved us so much that he would send him. He would send his only son to save us. Then he, lo- you know, he loves him, and he's so proud, you know, pleased with his behavior and what he did in his sacrifice that he is going to that the, the harvest of souls and the perfect bride is going to be. I mean, just can you imagine the most perfect and beautiful wedding ever? This is the father's involved, so it's going to be top notch. It's going to be perfect. It's going to be excellence and royal and you know, kingdom. It is not going to be lacking in any way, shape, or form because we're dealing with the father now taking care of his son. Well, that, that's a really good point. I've never really seen that in scripture. How Jesus was the uh, unblemished, unspotted lamb, and that's the bride that's going to be presented to him as well. Uh, that that that's a that is a great. Uh, that's a great uh, understanding of Scripture. There. That, that is wonderful. And the Apostle has this great teaching how that the, the, uh, the Lord is not coming back for an anointed bride or a uh, gifted bride, but that he is coming back after a, a glorified bride that's full of glory. Uh, and so that, that is an amazing teaching. You know, we, we put so much emphasis on... Uh, anointings and gifts, but that's not what the Lord is coming for. He's coming from uh, for a bride that's full of glory, full of the glory of God. And so that's the thing that we're after as well. That's what we want to make ourselves into, his glory. We're, we're not fashioning ourselves after a ministry, after an anointing, or after a gifting, or even many giftings, or many anointings, or mantles. It's, it's the glory of God. It's the the, uh, the spotlessness of God. It's the heart of God, the character of God that he's looking for. He's not looking uh, for his bride to have uh, just, just, just be just full of talents and, and uh, anointings and gifts, but it's the glory. It's, it's his own heart. It's his own character. It's his own love. It's the glory uh, of being in his presence uh, that, that he's coming for. That in itself is a, is a beautiful teaching uh, that the apostle teaches um, just, just ongoing revelation uh, of what, of what the Lord is looking for in us. Um, you know, He gladly, he, he so willingly gives us gifts, so willingly anoints us and and blesses us with with these things that are needed. But what our responsibility is is to go after Him, is to go after the relationship, is to go after uh, His heart, to to be His heart to be his love, to be his hands, his eyes, his ears, his feet here in this earth. Um, but that's, that, again, is the importance of the, re- the face-to-face relationship because in that face-to-face uh, relationship that happens, you're changed. Again and again and again, you're changed. You're changed into his likeness. You're changed into his being. You're changed into him. And uh, I'm so thankful. You know, I'm so thankful to be, have heard this message uh, and and to have witnessed this message, uh, I am so grateful, so thankful. Uh, I, w- I was thinking earlier in the day, um, you know, in in preparation of this phone phone telecast that w- or phone broadcast that we're on. I, I am so thankful that God has put me in this move, yes. put you in this move, put all of us in this yes. move. We are very blessed. Uh, to be a part of this. I'm so grateful for this. Amen. And, you know, it's important to know that, you know, each Thursday it is not something we just come through and say, oh, we're going to kill an hour, we're doing this, we're doing that, we're going to say these things. This is a divine appointment from the Lord, and this is something that we all come together. And, you know, some of us, this may be our only connecting point with the ministry, with the kingdom, with what's going on where we can meet with other people. And let us never take that for granted. Let us never take what we're a part of for granted. And, um, you know, always to honor and to revere what God has allowed us to be a part of. Pastor Steve, I think that's so beautiful that you're saying this. You know, 
uh, especially a man of God, saying, you know what, I am so grateful to be a part of what God is what God is doing in this earth. It's not about a man's agenda. It's not about me being the leader or me being in charge, but it's, a, it's about me being a part. It's yes. about me being a part. I'm a part of this. I'm important. Yes. Just as every single person on this line is a part of this, a part of this movement of God, and you yes. are important. You're all very, very, very important. And we want you to connect with us. We want you to, you know, get your information to us by calling the number um, one eight seven seven the glory. We need to stay connected. You know, relationships don't stay connected if we don't keep in touch with each other. And and so let's let's make sure we're doing that. Let's make sure that we are reaching out to each other and that we're being a part of this and that we're all like minded. We're here for the right motives and the right reasons and that's advancing the kingdom of God and that is reaching out, restoring, rescuing and saving lives, um, and saving souls and seeing the kingdom of heaven populated and the the kingdom of darkness dismantled. This is what we are going for. This is what this army is all about. This army is about advancing the kingdom of God. And yeah, I am God. just... Oh, Marcy, I'm sorry. Were you? No, I was just adding to what you were saying. It's about God's vision for Amen. the world. This yeah. is God's vision for the world in this last hour. The Father is going to come down and he's going to work with... Apostle Taylor, he's going to work with everyone that is connected with this army. Um, this is the Joel 2 army. Um, don't even try to um, think of it on a natural standpoint. Point. This is something that you cannot even just try to understand. You have to understand and believe it as the word of God gives it out. This is God's mm-hmm. army. In this last hour, the Father is going to come down. He is the latter rain. He is going to come down and reap his heart, the fruit of the earth. And this is a time for your relatives that you may have given up on or that you're still praying for. This is their time. He's coming for his harvest. So don't give up on your family. I don't care how um, far that they seem that they have gone. Don't give up on your loved ones. Don't give up on anyone. We are taking over. We're moving massively across the earth. We're going to sweep across this whole nation, going to shake the earth with the Father. And I'm telling you, every dark, demonic prince is going to fall, that you will not be able to stand against the Father or Jesus. This is what we are a part of. We're going to shake governments. We're going to shake kingdoms. We're going to shake worlds. This is what this army is about, and this is what Apostle Taylor is raising up an army as the Father has commanded him to to raise him up an army because he is going to come down and he's going to work with this army and we're going to reap the harvest. We're going to reap the souls. So don't give up on anyone, none of your loved ones, every last one of them, your enemies. Don't give up on them. Those that are bound by witchcraft. I mean, in, in, in dark places, don't give up on anyone. Just love them and watch God do what he's going to do in this last hour. That is so awesome, Marcy. And you know what? What does he tell us to do anyway? Love our enemies. Mm-hmm. You know, so we love doesn't give up and it doesn't fail. So we need to just, you know, let's everybody this week, let's let's have the assignment of let us seek God out for his revelation of love and how we can ex- be expressions of his love daily to people, you know, uh, people that give us challenges. It's easy to love the lovable. It's not so easy to walk in love with the people who are kind of unlovable and, you know, urkas and all that kind of thing. But but let us seek God this week because love is the thing that's going to draw the people in. Love is the foundation of the kingdom. Love is the thing that always wins. And um, just a few moments ago, I did receive word that Apostle Taylor is tied up on a conference call um, with some leaders in Korea. And as you can imagine, they're 14 hours ahead of us. Um, and so they are, they're up bright and early now over there, and they're connecting with Apostle with some things that are going to take place when he's there. He has sent his apologies, and he will be on the call next Thursday night. Um, so we do apologize on his behalf. But you know what? I really believe that this was a divine appointment tonight and that what the Lord God wanted to deliver, he was able to deliver. And if you have the heart of love, you'll be able to receive what he was pouring out. 
And so um, let us just all keep Apostle Taylor in prayer this week, um, as we should be doing each week. Uh, you know, we need to, you know, as the soldiers marching along behind him and serving and, and honoring him um, as he honors God, let us keep him in prayer. Uh, the attacks are great. The op- opposition is great because he is moving forward in the kingdom of God. You know, when we're not challenging the devil, we have no opposition. Apostle Taylor is challenging the devil daily. Minute by minute, he is challenging him because he is walking in the ways of the kingdom of God. And so let us be praying for him. Let us, let us continue to remember where we stand in this army. Let us remember our rank. Let us remember our position. Let us remember why God has called us here and what, is, what he has called us here for and what purpose. And we would love for you to, again, we just want to remind you to connect with us, to give us your information. Don't forget about uh, going to Apostle Taylor's page and giving your testimony about Jesus appearing to you. Um, Let us stay connected. Let us stay in relationship. Relationship is what builds. And we invite you to do that with us. We are so grateful for you. Apostle Taylor loves you so much. He's uh, expressed to me through another individual to let you know how much he loves you and he appreciates you, and he is praying for you. He loves you so much. Mercy? I just want to say this also. Don't, I'm not sure if Kathleen mentioned it. My call dropped for a second, but if you have not ordered your face-to-face book, do that today. Don't miss out on what God is doing in the earth. There's promises that are attached to it. Don't miss that. It's $15. Um, and I'm telling you, if you don't get it for yourself, get it for someone you love. Get it for your friends. Their life is never going to be the same. And reach out to us. We want we want to hear from everyone that is on this call, on this conference line. Mm-hmm. There are some great things that are going to be taken in the near future regarding the, the Army and how we're going to forge across the city um, two by two. I mean, and we, I mean everything is going to change. Um, so we want you to connect with us three um one eight seven seven the glory um or meet us at one of the uh locations and events that yes. you're gonna be at. Yes, amen. Pastor Steve, are you still on the line? I am. Okay. You know what? I would just I, I just think before we end this call tonight, before we leave here tonight, if you would just if you would just lead a prayer for Apostle Taylor, for what God's doing for what he's doing, um, even even if Apostle Taylor is not directly in locations where the Lord God has commanded him to hold services, let us just pray about those things right now, and let us just cover him with the blood of Jesus. Let us cover him with, um, you know, with God's love, and let us just see God's vision and God's destiny go forth in the earth today and everywhere that God is sending him. Will you do that for us? Absolutely, yes. That's, that's I thank all. you so much. Yes, let's, let's all, it's so wonderful, let's all, just wherever you're at, hopefully there's just every State of the Union represented here in this phone call tonight, uh, perhaps even other countries. But, yeah, everywhere that we're at, pray for this move of God. Pray that the move of God would, would uh, open up in your area, in your hometown as well, uh, just covering every part of this nation. Lord, we are so thankful that, God, you have called us, as one. You have called us as one army, Lord. You have called us to be one. Lord, to walk as one, to work as one, to pray as one, to talk as one, Lord, to fight as one. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for the move of God that is spreading across this nation, that is spreading across the globe. Lord, we thank you that you have raised up an army. We thank you that you have raised up a man, that you have raised up a general, that you have raised up a leader, a son, a son in the earth, God, a son, Lord, a prototype, a son, a first fruits, Lord, of what you are expecting, of what the earth is groaning for, the manifestations uh, of sons in Romans 8, the manifestation of sons in the earth, God. I thank you, Lord, Lord, that we are being shown a better way, Lord, that we are being taught a better way. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for this man of God, and I pray even now, God, Lord, that that you would just bless him, further him, favor him, propel him, keep him, 
Uh, give him safety, Lord, every organ of his body, every molecule of his yes. body, Lord, yes. energized, freshly energized, healthy, strengthened, oh, vitalized, oh, God, revitalized, Lord. Oh, I thank you, Lord, for an increase of strength, an increase of stamina, Lord, that his voice, Lord, would stay strong, Lord, as he preaches across the nation, across the world, or that his voice would be strong, that his body would be strong, or that every organ would be strong, O oh God. Oh, I pray, Lord, that you propel him, Lord, to the ends of the earth, God, I pray. Lord, that you propel him to the ends of the earth, and, Lord, that you take army with him, that, God, that will fight with him and fight for him, that, God, he would not be out there alone, but, Lord, you, as you're raising up this army, raising up an army, Lord, that we will continue to pray for him and bless him, Lord, to speak of what you are doing, Lord, in this move of God. I thank you, God, Lord, that you will uh, uh, give him every needed tool, every needed person, Lord, every ministry relationship. The relationships, Lord, would increase in the earth, that, God, there would be people that would uh, uh, work with him and, and join with him, God, and walk as one in love, or that you would give him brothers, true brothers, true brothers, or other sons that you're raising up, Lord, to be brothers of his, or to fight arm in arm with him. Lord, I thank you for this, God. I thank you, Lord, Lord, as these broadcasts increase, O Lord, or that the numbers would grow, that the army would grow from week to week, O God. Oh, and I thank you for the report, Lord, that will come in next week. I thank you for the report, Lord, of the increase of the miracles. God, we pray for an increase of revelation, an increase of miracles, an increase in the Spirit, an increase, God, of your anointing and of your presence, an increase, Lord, of the relationship that he so longs for, God, an increase in the relationship that he longs for, that absolutely, Lord, propels him. And I thank you, Lord, for the salvation of millions, the salvation of millions that are coming into the kingdom, the salvation of millions, Lord, that are being uh, stolen right out of hell, Lord, into heaven. I thank you, Lord, for the repentance of souls, the fruit, the precious fruit of the earth, God, that is coming in, that is being released into the kingdom, God. I thank you, Lord, or that there is a man. I thank you, God, that you have raised up a man, or that will go into the earth, or and fight with you, that will work and labor with you, God. I thank you, Lord, and help us, Lord, to be like-minded, that we will labor with our general. Lord, you will raise up intercessors, raise up prayer warriors, raise up offering givers, raise up people that will give to this work, that will bless this work, that will support this work, I pray, God. And, Lord, we ask all of this, Lord, in the very loving name of Jesus, the name that is above every name, the name that is above all names, the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we give you the glory tonight, Lord. Lord, we thank you for your presence in this broadcast tonight. We thank you, Lord, for the word that has gone out. Lord, your heart has gone forward. And I thank you, Lord, for what you have done here tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you so much, Pastor Steve, for doing that. It is just so important that we just always cover our general and our leader right now um, with with prayer. Prayer is so powerful, and I appreciate that. I thank you. I honor you for doing that. And I thank every one of you for being on the line tonight. Remember that Apostle Taylor always tells us that the Lord has not planned any defeat for us and that he loves us all very much. And that goes for every single person on this line tonight. We're so grateful you stayed on with us. We're so grateful that you're a part of what God's doing. We invite you and encourage you to bring forth your talents and bring forth the the strengths and the things that you have that can help support this army and help take us to the next level and help take Apostle Taylor to the next level. We invite you. We need you. You are valuable. You are important. Contact us today, one eight seven seven the glory We love you so much. Good night. You have just received your Army battle plans from General David E. Taylor, and now it's time to put God's plan into action. Thank you for listening. For a recording of this message or for tapes and CDs, please call one eight seven seven the glory